This is Center Stage, putting lawyers in the spotlight by highlighting attorneys and other industry experts to help take your law firm to the next level. Hey everyone, and welcome to Center Stage. I'm your host, John Henson, and this week um, we are looking at uh, EOS. I know we've mentioned it a couple of times on some previous episodes, and I really wanted to dive deeper into it um, and really kind of you know explain what it is and how you can get it implemented into your firm. And so to help us with that, I am joined by uh, Cesar Quintero. Uh, he is an EOS implementer himself. He actually helped us here at Spotlight Branding implement EOS, and so I figured there would be no one better uh, to help us talk about it this week. Cesar, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, John. Excited to be here. Awesome. So yeah, before we jump in, uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself uh, and why I got you on today. Sure. Um, so a little bit about myself. My name is Cesar Quintero. I'm down in Miami in South Florida, and I'm originally from Venezuela in South America. And at 24, I decided to get married, move to Miami and start a business all at the same time, because that's what we do when we're 24. I guess there's no risk at that age. Um, so I started a food business. We, we cooked and delivered meals to people in their office. Now, uh, mind you, this is 2004. So this is pre-Facebook, pre-Uber Eats, pre-all of that. So I went door to door and convinced people it was convenient to have your meal delivered kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we were kind of the first in Miami of doing healthy meals and delivered all this thing. So when the market grew, the company grew with it. Um, and while I grew... You know, I, uh, you know, I was answering the phones, I was delivering the meals, I was cooking the food when somebody didn't walk in. And I was, you know, I, I was, I was practically running like a chicken without a head, right. or a dead chicken, I would say at that point, because I had no time for anything. And the more the business grew, the less time I had for my family, for myself, for different things. So um, I read the book Traction in 2011. Um, and then I said, you know, this, this seems like every other book I've read about business. It's, it's sound, the concepts are the same, but it, it brought a process that made it easy to, to implement. I think throughout my 2004 to 2011, I was trying so many things and I was reading different books and I was going through different, you know, models and tools. Um, but I realized that what I loved about EOS and traction, the book traction was, that it gave me a, a process that made it very simple to start implementing. So we implemented it officially in 2012, we started. Um, it took me like a year to ramp up and, and, and get the team ready and myself ready mentally to do it. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was magic. It was, it was a way of um, me decentralizing myself. And I realized that I was a control freak and I wasn't letting people do their job and take ownership of their, of their roles. And, Within a year, we, we doubled in revenue, we quadrupled profit, um, we started a bonus, a profit sharing with a, with a team, and eventually I sold the company in 2016 to two of my employees. Um, so they, they, they got so invested in the company that they, they realized that I, and I started doing other stuff on the side, right. and they said, you know, you're not putting the energy you need here. They got an SBA buyout loan, bought me out. Um, and that's when I started doing EOS implementation for other companies. Um, so taking them through the same journey I had gone through. Um, and up to date, I've done over 90 companies implement, help implement EOS. Wow. Um, and currently I have a firm with six different implementers that um, we, we currently have around 75 active companies and we've helped over 100 companies uh, gain traction through EOS. Awesome. So, all right. So you obviously have the experience. So I guess just from a, a very high level view, you know, what exactly is EOS? You know, I mean, and what does it look like? What are the components of it, I guess, is what I'm trying to ask of EOS when it's implemented in a business? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's hard to explain, right? Like, what do you do, Caesar? Like, my mom didn't understand. It's like, I don't understand what you do. You've been doing right. this for four years. Um, and then, EOS as a, as a high level does three main things for every business, right? Number one, it's vision, right? And vision is it aligns everyone towards the same vision. One of the things that happens in business is that I start the business, I have a vision of it, then you join the business, you have a different version of it. And every single person in the business has their personal vision of where the company should go, what they should be doing, all of these things. Once we align all the visions and put everybody rowing on the same direction, 
that's when we can get to the vision. That's when we can really thrive. So the first thing we do is we put everybody aligned on the same vision. We define it and we make sure that it's shared by all. The second thing EOS does really well is create traction. And what I, what I talk about create traction, and that's the name of the book, is right. a culture of accountability and transparency. It's a culture where everything is measured, everything is transparent, everything is on scorecards. I know what I'm supposed to do. I know if I'm having a good day or a bad day. I don't need to have my boss tell me I'm doing a bad, a bad thing, right? I know with my numbers and I know with my stuff that I do. And, and also it creates transparency in the organization where I can't hide anymore. Like a lot of times we have those people in the office is like, what do you do? Oh my God, I do so many things. It's impossible to tell you. Yeah, yeah, but what do you do? Put it in a piece of, no, you can't. Nobody else can do what I do and it's too much. And I'm like, no, no, wait, put it on a piece of paper. What do you do, right? So EOS helps you gain traction in a very transparent way where everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing. Everybody's clear on who to go for, for what. And that way it creates clarity and transparency within the whole organization. So once we have vision, which is everybody rowing on the same direction, and traction, which is open and accountability and transparent, then we go to healthy, which is a third component, uh, the third uh, key thing that you get from EOS, which is a healthy team. So what we promote a lot in EOS, I think one of the things I love the most about it in my company and then in most companies I see, it creates a platform for people to share creates a platform for people to share what's going on, bubble up issues, solve issues together as team, have an open, honest, transparent conversation. So it creates a better team environment where there's healthy conflict, there's trust, and people can really commit and, 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 and grow. So again, if I were to summarize the OS in, in three words, it would be vision, traction, healthy. Awesome. Yeah. And, and, you know, when you're talking about traction, um, I mean, and you know this because you've worked with us so long, you know, I've, I've always kind of worn a ton of different hats here. And if yeah. you ask other people, they would have that response. Oh, he does so many things. He does all this and all this. But then you ask me and it's like, well, I mean, so here's what my KPIs are. This is, this yeah. is mostly what I do. Sure. I do a couple <laughs> of things, but these are the most important things that yeah. I do. And that's, and that's so helpful, you know, just to, because to your point, it's, it's, there's that accountability. And, you know, especially if you get to a point where, um, you know, you got to think about letting someone go, someone's not performing that well, or if they're doing really well, you have an easy way to figure it out. You know, yeah. it's not, you're not just going on a, a gut reaction or, or a feeling you have hard data to really help you guide a lot of the decisions that you're making. I think that's, that's something that's really, really good. And that has helped us out, um, with, with implementing EOS. Um, so in your experience, because you've gone from working with businesses who don't have this implemented to getting it fully implemented, to working with them for years, to you know having multiple quarterly meetings, to having multiple annual meetings. So you've seen it from one side of the spectrum to another. How does a business that has EOS, how does it operate differently from one that doesn't have something like this as part of its core identity? Yeah, I <laughs> That's a funny question. I, th I, th I think that, um, especially me, right? I, I ran almost, you know, what is it? Eight years um, of chaos and we were successful in spite of it, right? So I think most companies, especially entrepreneurial companies, right? When, when you start from, from the, the, the thought process of a person or a partnership or people who, who found the company, um, they have good intentions and, and, and they have the best intentions. They're typically great at what they do. But then when the company gets to a certain scale, it starts creating chaos. I think the more, pers the more people you have, the more confusion there is, the more complex the system works, the more telephone you're playing because, you know, I say this and then the other person says that and then says that and that transforms with each person that it goes through in each iteration. So I think complexity starts taking over the company. Mm -hmm. So there's companies that can hit $10 million and being fully disorganized, no processes, depending on what products they're selling and what things they are. And people are happy with that externally because you're delivering the product, but typically it feels tough. And I think that's what EOS really helps is to make, to make a happier environment internally, a better communication, better structure, more, more accountability. It's, it's kind of putting the simplicity within the complex, right? It's trying to make as 
everything as complex as it is, trying to simplify it and take it to the minimum expression where it creates simplicity for everyone, right? And that way everybody can understand what to do and not. So what I see most and what people come to us for most as implementers and, and to EOS is really around business doing okay or business not doing okay or business is stale, but I am going insane. That's a common thread. The common thread is I'm going insane. People are not you know, doing what we're supposed to be doing. Our results aren't showing. And how do we, how do we understand where we need to go, right? So, so there's a lot of, um, and sometimes it's on the owners, right? So in my case, it was totally on me. It was, I was a control freak. I want to have all major decision-making. I did not want to let go of the vine. I didn't want to, I didn't want to let go of, of the control. And when the first day we do an exercise where we map, you know, all of the, all of the boxes of who, who holds what seats in the accountability chart. Yeah. And I really realized that the top five seats was all me. Like I was doing five different roles because I had full decision-making on all of them. Yeah. And that's when I realized like, okay, that's why I'm going insane. Cause I'm bipolar, right? I'm, 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 I'm thinking about the future and everything we need to do. And then I'm also implementing and making sure everybody's doing the things right. And I'm also in charge of the production and quality and assurance. And then I'm also in charge of sales where I want more people and more things and finance. I don't want money to anything. So I was just like every day was a constant conflict of interest yeah. in my mind trying to fight with each other. Yeah. And I think that's what EOS does. It tries to simplify everything within the company as who has final accountability for what, what are the processes we follow? What's, where are we going so that we're all aligned and going on the same direction? Yeah. And one of the things that, that I've enjoyed about it, even though it's not necessarily how I'm wired, is, is the vision aspect of it, you know, is, is setting the goals, whether it's the 10-year, the three-year, or the one-year, and having all of your, you know, projects, it's called, ro they're called rocks in, in EOS, but, you know, all of that contributing to those goals. So you have... So you're not, you know, to your point, running around like a chicken with your head cut off all the time. You're, you have a, you have a goal, you have an endpoint that you're trying to get to. And when you have that all, you know, laid out and you have the vision set up for that, it really does calm everything down. It doesn't eliminate chaos altogether. I mean, you're, if you're, especially if you're running a business, you're always running around, but at least <laughs> yeah. it gives you a direction to go. I love that point because I think one of the things that EOS and Traction does really well it's all based on the agile process, right? So it's, it's for all of you who are in SaaS and technology and all these things, it's, it's a very agile process. So it brings agile to a leadership model and, and to, the, to a business because the reality is a lot of times in the back, back way when, you know, the Jim Collins of the world, the good to great is like plan 30 years in advance and know where you're going to go and, and roadmap the heck out of finances and processes and all that. And you have the time to really like, dive deep and say, okay, next year we're going to do all this and next year we're going to do. What I love about this process is it, it brings in agile where you're thinking, what's the end point and the how will take quarter by quarter. So every, every week, mm. I'm going to make sure that I'm in line to the quarter. Every quarter, I'm going to pivot and be aligned towards what I need to do in the year. Every year, I'm going to pivot and align what I need to go to three year. And every three year, I'm going to go to 10 year, right? So we have like the outcome. We know where we want to go but we don't spend the time road mapping it that much because the world is changing so fast that it's impossible to, to, to know that COVID's coming or that meta now is, is a new right. reality <laughs> or that, you know, social media all changes and SEO is no longer a thing. And now we need to do, you know, this PPC or this other thing. Right. So, right. so everything changes so frequently that what I love about the system, this system is made for wartime. This system is made for, it's this is a war room. We plan, let's see where we want to be in 10 years, three years, one year, you know, and then, but then we execute on a daily and weekly basis and we pivot. I hate the word pivot now. Let's, let's say change. <laughs> yeah. Too much pivoting in, in COVID, but let's, we, we change. We're adaptable to what needs to happen so that we get to that end result and the how changes all the time. So we know where we need to go. We know what we need to do and accomplish, but the how changes all the time. And that's what I love about the system. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we talked about what EOS is from, you know, a 10,000 foot view. Talk, talk briefly about just kind of what it looks like on a, on a weekly, quarterly basis. You know, I mean, like I mentioned quarterly meetings, annual meetings and stuff like that. So, you know, kind of 
describe for our audience, you know, what, what are those meetings like? How, what does it look like in practice on a, on a day-to-day basis? Yeah. So um, the traction component talks a lot about the meeting pulse and there's a meeting pulse where we start um, where we meet and that's why it's a wartime, you know, kind of uh, (laughs) agile process where you usually meet once a quarter to plan for the quarter, right? So, so what, what are the goals, but then you annually meet to plan long-term strategy. So once a year, you're going to be looking at 10 years, three years, one year ahead, where you're looking at, you know, 20% confidence level, 50% confidence level, 80% confidence level of where can we achieve at what point? Because a lot of times, you know, predicting is a, is a leadership muscle. So we need to learn how to predict long-term and short-term. So what we're doing is we're predicting long-term and we're seeing where do we need to do go? What do we need to achieve to get to where we want to go? But then we meet on a quarterly basis to make sure what's, what needs to happen this quarter to get closer to that yearly goal. And then every week we have a level 10 meeting is what we call, and you can Google level 10 meeting, Gino Whitman or level 10 meeting traction. It'll explain. And it's the most efficient meeting there is. It's one of my favorite tools in the, in the system where it's a 90 minute meeting and what you do and people are going like 90 minute meeting, not another meeting, but it's not death by meeting. This meeting is the mother of meetings. You don't need more meetings. That's it. So you have this one meeting and you don't need to meet with your team at all through the week. Because during this meeting, you're checking data, you're checking people, you're checking issues, you're checking goals and rocks, you're checking what are the things that we need to get accomplished, and you're checking tasks that we promise to do, right? So in this 90-minute meeting, we're, we're prioritizing what we need to talk about, what we, and we, we call it IDS. We identify, we discuss, and we solve problems. A lot of times in our meetings, we just discuss, 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 or we report, 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 which should have been an email. But these meetings are all about solving. They're strategic meetings where we solve stuff, right? So what I love about the process, and I don't know if if that's what you're asking, like the day in, day out, really it's the meetings. It's a a rhythm of accountability that creates um, a rhythm of, so you have your weekly meeting with your team to solve. And then if you're a manager, you probably have one up and one down. Right. So you bubble up to the leadership and then you bubble down to your team. Yep. Um, and then the other type of meetings that you have are the quarterly meetings. So that's kind of the, the, the piece where how this looks in action. You have a weekly meeting, quarterly meetings, but then you also have a one to one with each of your um, team members so that we all align in what's going on. And, and in that meeting, we ask, how are we behaving? How are our core values? How are we defining the fit? How are we going through that? And we use a tool called the People Analyzer, which is a great way to, to bring down uh, a, a subjective you know, yeah. concept to a more objective measure. Um, then we ask, you know, how are your metrics going? Like, what do you, where do you need help? What resources do you need to improve your results? What are things that we need to do? And then the third thing we talk about is how clear are your responsibilities? How are you performing in each of these things? Do you get it? Do you want it? Do you have capacity to do it? And that way we all understand whether... You, you, you have the right seat and, and you're the right person in that right seat doing the right things, right? Yeah. So these quarterly conversations more like one-to-one casual conversations. You have a lot, of, a lot of companies do yearly reports and yearly reviews and all these things. This is more of an alignment conversation. This is a conversation where we align, we make sure that everybody's on the right place. And as a good manager, if you have this weekly meeting with your team and a quarterly one-to-one with each person, that's once you have the system implemented, that's more than enough to really be a good leader, a good manager, and really make sure that everybody's rowing on the same direction. Yeah. And, I, you know, like I'll fully admit, I hate a ton of meetings, but <laughs> I will readily admit L10s and the quarterlies, especially, they are like the way they are structured is so great because, you know, to your point, like you solve, you get things solved, you know, and, and the one thing that I had to learn is that, you know, EOS uses the word issue in, in, I guess, kind of in, in a broader sense, issue has kind of a negative connotation, but in, within EOS, yeah. an issue is just anything that you're bringing anything to you the table. It doesn't have yeah. to be negative. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. so between, you know, L10s and, and the quarterly and the annual, just getting everything, you know, laid out and, and getting goals set and all that, it, it does, it, it creates a lot of great momentum. Um, and, and I think that that, that does a lot of good for a lot of businesses. Now, I will say this, one of the criticisms that I've heard 
is, uh, you know, about EOS, you know, when I tell people, yeah, we run EOS, I've heard from multiple people, it's like, oh, that's just a thing that, you know, most big businesses do, you know, th- that's what the big corporate uh, companies have as their structure. But why does EOS, and, and we can speak to this because we're a small business, why does EOS work well, even for smaller businesses? Yeah, I think, I think EOS works best for smaller businesses. I think EOS is a very simple system um, that really, once you have, you know, 10 employees and, you, you know, our sweet spot is 10 to 200 employees is our sweet spot. Mm. Um, once there's 10 employees, there's already a structure, there's already complexity, there's already chaos in, in, in that dynamic. So we talk about 10 employees because this is not a startup system, right? So this mm-hmm. won't help you create a market fit. This won't help you understand your strategy. This won't help you. This will help you coordinate and synchronize people, right? So yeah. once you have around 10 employees, that's kind of the, the time you should be start thinking about this because now who does what? Because at the beginning, you have three people doing everything, right? right? And it's just everybody's just doing everything we can. And the startup mode is like, let's just get to, let's just get to market fit. Let's just prove the model. Let's just prove the concept. But once you got to those 10 employees, now you have enough people to start really separating and saying, okay, these people do this, this person does this, this person has final. So our sweet spot is actually 10. I've, I've helped a couple of companies that were franchises were pre-startup mode because they wanted to have the vision together. They want to have the rhythms together. They knew they had to ramp up really fast. So yeah. like um, there was a, um, a local Geico agency we, we helped here in South Florida and they needed 35 agents within the first three months. But then they said, you know, let's, let's implement EOS, even though the franchise has a framework of how to do business, but EOS is more, how do we work as a team? Right. That's what EOS was really about. So we went in and we consolidated the vision. We consolidated the teams, the meetings, all these things. And then boom, within three months, they were at their, at their, but they had set all the structure in advance so that it's not as hard to change later, right? So sometimes starting early is, is better. And, and to throw a curveball out there, I even yeah. use EOS in my, comp- in my, in my family. <laughs> so I know, I know Mark does too, right? So, yeah. so I brought EOS into my, my life and I've said, okay, let's, let's really understand what our roles and responsibilities are for me, my wife, my daughters, who is accountable for what? And that created a huge transparency in our company. And, and, and then we don't assume things anymore. Right. right. Which is what we do in business too. We assume, oh, somebody else is going to take care of that or somebody else is responsible for that. But now I don't assume anymore. I know I take care of finances, decisions. I, de- I take care of long-term vision. My wife takes care of family events and daughter decisions. So like if, if the girls have to do this, that's her decision. I can have some input, but at the end, it's her accountability. So we've brought this to us. And then every week we have a family meeting and we have, it's not 90 minutes because my five-year-old would <laughs> would kill me, but it's at least a 30 minute meeting where we go over the week, the things that we do a star report and all these things, they collect the cash and the allowance based on their merits and what they accomplished that week. So I really brought this down even to my family because it's so effective and so efficient. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and a couple of our employees have done that too, because I've heard them talking about it. It's, it's brilliant. It's, it's, it's a good, easy system that you can replicate. So um, how does a business owner get started? You know, they say, all right, this sounds great. I want to add, you know, I want to have this as part of my business. How do they get started doing that? Yeah, there's three different ways you can get started. Um, the first one, well, four, actually, the first one, the easiest is you can grab traction, the book um, or get a grip. So traction is a great theory and reference book. So if you like theory, you like understanding the, the concepts, go to traction. Uh, author is Gino Wickman, amazing human being. Then get a grip is Mike Payton and, and Gino Wickman. They both wrote the book together. Get a grip is more about a story. It's a fable of a company going through traction, right? Mm-hmm. So you can read that book and then you can follow the process through the book if, if, if it's something that resonates with you. So the first one, the easiest way to get started is reading a book and following the book. That's the easiest. The second easiest is you can go to eosworldwide.com and there's something called Basecamp. And what Basecamp is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a do-it-yourself videos. People can go online, they can register. It's about $500 a month, give or take. 
and you pay $500 a month and you have full access to all the libraries, how to implement all the tools. You can download everything. You can do all these things and you can start downloading and, and, and have someone in your company follow the videos so that they can implement within your company. So that's the second easiest way. Then the third is you can find an EOS implementer like me. So a lot of companies that go through the book or go through um, Basecamp, what they realize is, you know what? This is a lot of work and we want to do what we're good at in our business. Let's just bring somebody else in to help us teach the system. So people like me as an implementer, we usually stick around for like a year, year and a half, two years if the company's really big, um, where we help you implement the system, but then we train somebody inside your team to take over the system and really um, they become the integrator and they become the ones who implement the system all over. So um, our job is to be specialists on the system. We come in, we're not consultants, we, we're implementers because we won't tell you what to do. You know what you do. You're the expert in your business. We come in, we teach you the system, we teach somebody in the company to run it and then we get the hell out of there. So that's the implementer. Um, you can go to EOS Worldwide and, and, and try to find an implementer near you. So that's the third way of implementing. And then the fourth is if you want me or my team in South Florida or anywhere else, you can go to theprofitrecipe.com and you can find a team of our implementers and different specialties. We're all, you know, uh, ex-business owners. We've all implemented EOS in our companies. So we now bring that to different people there. So those are the four different ways that you can implement EOS uh, through the books, through Basecamp online by going through the videos finding an implementer near you or just reaching out to us and we'll, we'll figure out and we'll refer somebody who will be a perfect fit for you. Awesome. And yes, and I will have Caesar's information in the show notes. Um, and I can, I, we can obviously vouch for that implementer process. And I think, you know, in my head, I just, I heard people when you talk about the implementer be like, well, they don't know my business. How can they come in and teach me how to run my business when they don't even know what my business is? And the cool part about that is, and, and I know because we had this experience with you, you don't necessarily have to know the, the most intimate details about a business. You don't have to know the industry jargon because it, the overall system works across industries. And, and that's what you're there to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the specialist on the system. I right. come in and teach you the system. I don't, I don't tell you how to manage your, 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 your product, your service, your quality that that's on you. That's your expertise, right? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Awesome. Well, this has been a, a lot of really great information. If, uh, any of you out there is interested in having Caesar come in and implement EOS into your firm. Uh, I've got his contact information in the show notes. So uh, definitely reach out to him uh, and, you know, do some more learning on this is a really great system. Um, obviously we can speak from experience. You know, we have it implemented here. Uh, we know a bunch of business owners who have it implemented. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's been nothing but success. I haven't heard of a failure yet. Maybe, maybe it's out there, who knows, but I haven't heard it, but um, you know, definitely look more into this, especially if you just find that you're just living in a world full of chaos. EOS does a really good job of calming a lot of that down and, and getting you pointed in a specific direction. That's going to do it for us this week. Uh, thank you for all of the uh, reviews and ratings and all that on Apple Podcasts. Uh, continue to send those in. Any other topics you want us to cover, I can go find the expert to come discuss it. And that's going to do it. Caesar, thank you so much for joining us this week. Thank you, John. Thanks for listening. To learn more, go to spotlightbranding.com slash center stage.